This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Need a website and you don't know how to make one? No worries, make it with Squarespace. Hello, it's me and this is Greg. And I am back with, what, what, what what's this? Don't worry about it, am I hiding acne? I'm not hiding acne, acne, I don't know her. Yeah, I'm hiding acne. But hey, now we have like a cool little googly eye situation, like fashion who? In today's video, I made another visit to the thrift store where I purchased three thrifted art pieces and I'm going to recreate those thrifted art pieces into my style. But not just my art style, but that's right, I'm still obsessed. I'm going to recreate it in my own Prixel DIY stamp kit style because I can't stop using the Prixel. I'm having fun, okay? So for our first art piece, we are going to be recreating this little guy. And who is this? It's just a little alligator or crocodile. Just vibing, hanging out, enjoying the bed. I mean, my goodness, look at him. He's vibing. So let's get into it. I'm starting off with the foreground, which kind of seems backwards. Usually you start off with the background and work yourself forward in art, but I felt like the foot frame of the bed was a really good place to start because it sort of gave me an anchor on where to create everything else off of this piece. And even though the original art piece is actually cropped off at the foot of the bed, I felt like creating this illustration of an alligator in bed as a whole piece on a piece of paper with a white background. It does have a background, a blue floor, a yellow wall, and an outlet. But I felt like the focus of this piece was definitely going to be our alligator in a bed and the yellow wall and blue floor weren't that important. You know what's important? An alligator vibing in bed. I mean, he's got his arms behind his head. He's hanging out. He's enjoying life. Maybe it's the weekend. It's his day off. Day off from doing what? Does this alligator have a job? I'm off topic. So I created the foot of the bed by mixing, I think it was orange with my red ink pad that has been absolutely destroyed by other colors. The ink pads that came with the Prixel kit, I've actually been using as a gradient ink pad. So my red has been mixed with a multitude of other colors. So it's actually really good to mix that with our orange to create a nice brown color. And I think it turned out really well. After creating the foot of our bed, I moved on to the sheet or the blanket. It's nice and pink. I have a nice pink ink. It was perfect. From the pink blanket, I moved on to the actual alligator itself. And this I really struggled with. There was just a lot of parts with the arms going behind the alligator's head, overlapping parts, its long snoot. When it comes to working with Prixel, I really have to minimalize and stylize any illustration that I'm working with. So maybe things look a little bit wonky, but I think they turned out really cute regardless. Do they make Make sense? Probably not. This is also an alligator laying in bed. So does that make sense? No. Is it cute? Yes. When it came to the headboard of our bed, I did play around with including the pillows. As you saw in the original piece, there are pillows behind the alligator's head because he is relaxing. You don't want to relax with your head against a wooden headboard. You want soft pillows. But I did a test with the pillows and it just kind of looked like this weird white blob that wasn't included in the headboard behind the alligator and it just it just didn't look great so I decided that it actually looked a lot better if I just didn't include the pillows and it was just a backboard behind the alligator. Is it true to the original piece? No but I think when it comes to recreating things in your style especially when it comes to art supplies that are very limited sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and not include a pillow and I think it was for the best. So once we had the flat color of all of our pieces it was time to start adding detail so I started off with with shading the blanket of the bed. When it comes to my own personal art style, when I work with watercolor or digital, I like to really simplify my shading. But when it comes to my stamp art, I really like to play around with gradients. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just fun. But I thought it would be really interesting to have a gradiented side shade of the entire bed. I use a light purple to shade over the pink. And because the original has a lot of detail with the wrinkles or the folds of the blanket over the side, I went back over that with some spot shading from a red to purple fade. And I think it turned out really nice. You can really see the folds in the blanket. It really adds some depth, especially when it comes to a stamped art. I feel like I'm really achieving that shading and folding that I want to see from the original piece. 
Then I moved on to shading our alligator. The only shade I wanted to add to the alligator was to separate the arms from the body. The arms are tucked behind the head, so I wanted to make sure that you could separate those body parts. I added some blue gradient and it created the perfect shading. You guys know I'm a sucker for blue and green together, so it just looks, it looks great. So at this point, I just wanted to add some spot line art here and there. The original piece itself was in a lineless style, but I felt like there were definitely parts that would benefit from a little bit of line work. And I think this piece turned out super successful. I think he's super silly. I love him. And there he is. We have an alligator just vibing in bed. Next up, we'll be recreating this farmhouse piece that I found at a Goodwill when I visited the United States. It's just, it's just a farm amongst, I don't know, some greenery. So let's get into it. Before we continue, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. With Fluid Engine, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagining drag and drop technology. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine included in any Squarespace website. Whether you're selling physical goods, digital content, or services, Squarespace has the tools you need to get started selling online. And they even have flexible payments, making checkout seamless for your customers, except credit card, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Golden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the art. So if you saw my last video, I explored a lot with creating backgrounds using the Prixel and I found out that the more simple, the better. Now that might also boil down to the selection of colors I have. If you don't have really good contrast in colors, it is hard to create an amount of detail that doesn't all blend together. Starting off with a blue sky with clouds, simple enough. I also thought I would fade that sky from blue ink to no ink. Can you tell I did this in the final piece? Not really, but it's also nicer to look at because when I layer the colors later, you don't see this, I guess, block of color from where the blue stops and the other colors start. It fades off to nothingness, so it's a little bit less distracting where colors overlap. Could I have planned this piece to where the colors didn't overlap? Sure, but... Part of what I love about working with a transparent ink is the overlapping colors. Even if it doesn't look great, I think it's just a nice detail and it looks interesting. So I embrace it. Moving on to the barn, I started off with the side and completely forgot to create the front of the barn. So I printed them at different times. I also decided to separate the silo from the barn. In the original piece, the silo is in front of the barn, but I really wanted to simplify this piece to the two parts next to each other. So the barn is going to be on the right side and I will be printing the silo on the left side, really reducing them to the basic colors, the red barn, the yellow silo. The barn had some additional details in yellow that I just, maybe I'm just not familiar to what barns are, but I, I wasn't sure what was going on, but I really wanted to simplify this piece to super, super simple shapes and colors. So I just went with a regular red barn. And moving on to our green background, I wanted to create a nice layering. So I'm going to put a light green down first. This is the green that came with the Prixel kit itself. The green is a little bit lighter. So it made for a really good background green tree color. And it was time to move on to some overlapping bushes and trees. In the original piece, there are bushes and trees that are overlapping the barn. So I wanted to create these nice wavy, bushy pieces that go over the barn and the silo. You can definitely see the barn and the silo through the green but again I really like to embrace the transparency of the ink so I think it looks interesting maybe it's not everybody's style I think it's cute after adding our foreground foliage it was time to add the black details the roof of the barn the roof of the silo and also even though I can't see what might be behind the silo on the barn because I did move the silo to the left of the barn instead of in front of the barn I just felt like there was a lot of blanks space on the barn so I added a barn door and I think it looks really cute. It does add a little bit more black in the piece that isn't just 
the roof. And the final, final detail, I just felt like, again, it was a very flat red color on the barn. So I added a little bit of purple shading as a gradient from the roof down. And even though you can see a little bit of the blue behind the red of the barn, that creates a sort of a purple. It's a very subtle shade that I think just helps separate the side of the barn to the front of the barn. And it creates a nice shading. And there it is, our barn piece. For our final thrifted piece, I'm going to be recreating this absolutely crazy rendered, gradiented, painted self-portrait by, who is that? Hilda C. Hilda C, are you in the audience? Probably not. But I thought this piece was really fun, so let's create it in Prixel style. This piece I definitely wanted to approach absolutely differently than I have ever approached any Prixel art piece ever because there is so much gradient and so much painted style and it's just, it's really intense. I thought it was time for me to explore using the Prixel in a way I've never used before. So I started off actually using the ink pads directly onto the paper, pressing lightly to try to create a gradient and not to create an absolutely dark, intense blob of ink on the page. So I started off with a light dabbing and then I moved on to creating the face of our character. And this is where the Prixel really shines, obviously creating the actual shapes and the line work of the piece. The face was a lot of fun. I just have a lot of fun with creating silly, goofy, funny expressions with faces. So exaggerating her face was really fun. Her eyebrows make her look worried and silly. Her cheeks are going inward. Is that what she looks like? No, but I think it's fun and silly and exaggerated and I really like this face. I was actually really impressed with the colors of ink that I used. I used black, blue, and green for the outside and for the inside I used a base of pink with a little bit of orange and it looks so similar to the actual painting is kind of crazy. Because the painting relies a lot on blending and brush strokes and just abstracting the face, I wanted to really make sure that I included the Prixel textures, creating line work, ghosting with printing the ink multiple times on the page. And although it's not perfect, obviously they used paint that was opaque and easy to layer on top of each other. Using ink that is transparent made it a little bit hard to create layering colors. For example, once I put a dark color down, there was no way I was going to put a lighter color on top. So I really had to make sure I layered things in a way that worked. The ear definitely got a little bit hidden at the end. I probably should have made it as dark as I did, but it is what it is. I think it turned out really successful. I absolutely love the colors of this piece. I really wanted to play around with texture to create a gradient and not just a smooth ink gradient. So I took some circular Prixel pieces and just held them in my hand and stamped circles of color to create a gradient and texture. And I think it turned out really fun. This is definitely super different than any piece I have created using the Prixel. I don't think it's a style that I would normally work in. I probably won't work like this in the future, but I really, enjoyed experimenting with it. It was really fun just to get in there and get dirty. My hands are absolutely stained with ink. With the other past two pieces, I created three renditions to make sure that one of them turned out good. Because when it comes to printmaking, there are obviously going to be mistakes. Not every print turns out perfect, but hopefully one of those three do. With this piece, because I was really going in there being abstract, getting messy, just putting ink down, this is actually the only piece I created for this one. And I think it turned out really fun. It obviously looks similar to the piece when you look at it you can definitely tell I was recreating the original it was fun to play around and get different with my art style and there it is once again a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video if you need a website check out Squarespace and a huge thank you to you guys for watching this video I'll see you in the next one bye